I want to just talk about the IT services and thank you, uh, Edward, because I'm well known for the IT skill that I have. And uh, you're on about a lovely card that will tell us all our business. And I want to tell you how well it works since we haven't even got the broadband. <laughs> In my house, and the four of us there nicely and not talking to each other on our gadgets, and if one of them decides to do something like download a song, the rest of us are all turn off your broadband. So the idea that we'd be CSI and have a card that'll tell us all is so far in the future, we don't even be worrying about it. It's a bit like the Sam Maguire coming today, oh. <laughs> I changed my job uh, a few years ago. I went from the district into the school program and I moved my lovely desk in a fantastic office into another room, empty room, with the heat doesn't come on half the time. And I said, I'd like to move the IT down. I said, not a problem, Patricia. Uh, we'll get on with that. Three and a half years later, I ran into a very person I hardly recognised. He was the IT support. He's as elusive as the hen's teeth. And I said to him, I'd like to get my IT sorted out after this length of time, just so I could get an audio email. He said, Grant, and where are you? So I told him. And he said, um, right. I said, I'd like to be able to print out a document. I'd like to download something. I'd like to be able to do that. I'm only sending in this request now for three and a half years. And he replied to me, not at all, Patricia. Will you send me an email with all that down in it? <laughs> talk to you about primary care because at the moment in primary care is anyone that's there is nobody knows who anybody is we've been they talk about people in beds in primary care people are under the beds there is nobody knows who's doing what all we know is that people are moving this way and that way and they're getting promoted and they've got new jobs and their new titles we have absolutely no idea who's doing anything i've asked now for six months for an organizational chat for those of you that is not in the know, one time there was a little thing you knew who everybody was, the CEO, the five program managers, and then it filtered down to the rest of us. Now, there is no one even drawn an organisational chart. So I'd like in our new magazine, an organisational chart, so somebody knows who's anybody, because we haven't a clue. Primary care is gone so bad now. The only people talking to each other are the few frontline staff to the patients. Nobody else is talking to anybody else. And the only thing we hear about the new configuration of primary care is your nurse manager might consign your annual leave. As if that is the only priority. Well, in my world, it probably is. But how and ever, it has gone so bad now, there's nobody to nothing. There is no dental service, there's no orthodontist service. If there is, you definitely want to pull your own teeth before you get there. There's very little ophthalmology. The audiology services are fell asunder. Um, the speech and language service, depending on where you are, you could have a five year waiting list, and by then, if you're not talking, you'll be able to email someone with your request. <laughs> and telling you guys, it's gone to hell. What was? We give out medical cards to under six when 45% of the population had it. And yet everybody else, the services they need, the psychologists, the mental health services, the speech therapists, the ophthalmologists, the screening services, everything is set asunder. In Galway, up till two years ago, three of the dentists retired. And so they said, rather than screen them in the National School Programme three times, we give them an exit screen. So they now screen them in fifth class. That's the service. And if that's what we're paying our tax for, I actually don't think it's good enough. You know, people always think screening is a waste of money. Screening stops problems happening, and it makes a big difference. When a child can adhere, and it has a blue ear, and it's not dealt with, it affects every single thing that child does. It is a valuable service. It's the only service that's valuable to that child at the time. When the child is sitting at the back of the classroom, and this year, Dr. Kevin Gallagher, how he decided that no fifth class needed an eye test. Uh, I don't know. He decided then, don't bother screening them, we're not picking up enough. If we were only picking up one in a hundred, it was valuable to that child at the back of the class. <laughs> Why are we losing the things that were good? We have broken everything. They spent years breaking the hospitals. They're coming our way now, and they're breaking everything that was good in our service. There's so many people making decisions about nothing they know about, and they don't listen to anyone, and they don't care. They actually don't care. 
so much promotion and moving sideways and going upward. It's an absolute disgrace. I go to work now, I do the best I can. And when I've done everything that I can to do, I'm asked to do more for someone that's not able to do what they're doing. It's just not good enough anymore. I think we need to just say, God sake, will someone get a, 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 well, get a t-shirt for a start. But <laughs> just get, and maybe you can a wire from the old. But anyway, that is it. We want the broadband before we want the IT card. We want common sense. I don't know, will it ever come back? Was it ever there? Maybe it was or maybe it's not. But I say we have a lot to learn and we can still make a difference every day we head out there. Thank you. Um, I propose this motion and it's going to be seconded by Stephen Woods, who will be speaking shortly. Um, so supernumerary roles have been a long-standing contentious issue for student nurses and midwives. Um, it is extremely important that students and their learning needs are protected on all occasions when in their clinical areas. An increase in demand on nurses' roles due to short, um, short staffing. Sorry, I'm first time to speak because I'm a little bit nervous. Um, so. That's okay, go on. <laughs> um, so, due to the short staffing, um, our role is hindered by the short staffing on the wards because our staff nurses just simply don't have the time to teach us, and very often we work out of our scope. And it's not that we want to do so, it's that we feel like we have to do so, both to be an active member of the multidisciplinary team, as well as help our staff nurse with their challenging workload. So I really urge you to support this motion, which will hopefully try and protect the supernumerary role of the nurses. As the role of nurses develops, evolves and changes, the demands of our society and the diversities of a growing multicultural population is noticeable. And I believe there has been a failure by government to appropriately recognise the significantly more prevalent incidents of hostility directed at healthcare staff through both verbal and physical abuse. Our profession is one of a, a career. Our goal, as we see behind me, is making a difference, making a positive difference to people's lives. We are not deserving of growing hostility, but we are forever deserving of protection each and every one of us. Could I just ask everybody here to lift their card if they have had verbal or physical abuse directed at them? Take a look around you. Keep your card up if you've reported it or you know how to report it. This is the problem that we have. This is the problem we have. We don't have the knowledge base to appropriately address the violence being directed at us. We need that support, we need them structures in place. Um, we must as an organisation stand firmly together in our abhorrence of attacks and threats and stuff and be firm in our demand for zero tolerance. Our approach should be both pragmatic and measured to each reported incident. If you look at Australia at the moment, legislation there has been introduced where if a member of the nursing profession is attacked, that person doing the attack can be sent to prison for up to 13 years. Here, I think it's a 5,000 euro fine. So we must, as a united union, encourage all our members to report any threats at, or attacks as a means of highlighting this issue. Thank you for your consideration.